Hey guys, it is Saturday, September 18th. Is it Sunday? It's Sunday the 19th. I'm crazy. Anyway, it's like 6.30 in the morning and my sister just left to go back to Ohio. She was here for a week. Hadn't seen her since. 2014 yeah seven years so like I said it was nice to have her we had her in the office it was just enough space for her thank God but I gotta get in there and do a lot of work I'm kind of behind I picked up some stuff at uh, the Goodwills down in Corpus we went to the bins and I tried to videotape it for y'all but the camera kept going in and out and I couldn't get anything done I got a few things from there uh, that I'll show y'all later. Uh, the first Goodwill we went to was small, rinky-dinky, very dirty. Had a lot of clothes, not a lot else of anything. I mean anything. I found a pair of like Kid Skechers waterproof boots. So anyway, when me and Mom were at the bins, excuse me, she found a pair of uh, Stanley men's work boots steel toed they're worth about thirty dollars these were in really good shape probably could have gotten a little bit more but at the bins you know how it goes we only found one shoe so then i went to a different one and i found these nikes i don't know tell me if y'all ever heard of them uh they slip on they're slip on nikes i don't know and the texture felt a little different so i don't know if they're like nike water shoes but they were white and the swoosh was orange and on the bottom of the shoe was a circular orange it didn't say anything uh, I think they were white in color and then I found a pair of Vans uh, the plain white Vans still do really good the problem was I can only find one so if we could have found those three pairs of shoes at $1.49 to purchase per pound we would have done really well but it was impossible I found some books uh, what else did I find shoes I found they did find three three pairs of shoes I believe and uh, some books that are interesting one is called flower fairies so on each page it's a fairy sitting on a particular flower and it says what kind of flower she is and da 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 but it was really cute and I found like three Bibles and I grabbed them Bibles do well but I'll show it all to you and I got some souvenirs uh, there's a couple that I like in particular uh, and one of them I'm gonna put a magnet on it I'll show it to y'all it's gonna be cute uh, let's see I do have a couple souvenirs right here hold on Oh, the other one's kind of far away. I can't reach it. I'll tell you why I can't move in a minute. But, um, I got Elias a mug. And it was a really nice mug. And I got it home and the handle had broken. It broke in two pieces. I think I can epoxy it. Or, uh, E6000 it, it together. He hasn't seen it yet. Because if he saw it broken, he won't want it fixed. So, uh, let me see if this one's not. There's so much stuff to choose from. But this is my mug. I love the color yellow. And you don't really see souvenir, and I love the color orange. So you don't really see, you know, souvenirs in those kind of colors, so I grabbed it. But this place was called Ocean Treasures. And on Google Maps, the, the address was incorrect. So we wound up in front of a golf gas station that was totally closed down. So I called the lady and she gave me the correct address and she was very, very nice. And uh, hold on. when we got there, the store was huge. I mean, huge. Anything you could think of. And the prices were really well. So I noticed that she had some 
winter shirts uh, on sale. So I went ahead and looked over there, you know, just, just to see. Because, you know, it's always the best time to buy in for winter in the summer coffee. One moment. I'm not using my new mug. I haven't washed it yet. Oh, and at that first really nasty Goodwill, I, I did find an outfit. It's really cute. It's um, a black skirt, but it's a little bit longer, so when I sit down, it goes to my knees. And I was looking for a shirt to match it, and I was just having a hard time. And I turn around, and there's a gray shirt with short sleeves, and it had uh, little black cuffs, and I'm like, perfect. And we washed it. Pat had to wash clothes, so she took that for me. I, there I also found it's a full body snowsuit for men really thick all the zippers buttons work I tested it and made sure but it was dirty so I'm gonna I've got some stuff I'm gonna go ahead and go to the laundromat on um, I can't go Tuesday I, I was going I told Katie I'm gonna go to the laundromat on Tuesday and she's like on my birthday to her okay sorry Wednesday but um, I also found a quilt. That's when Pat and I were here in town. And I think she kind of wanted it. And she was contemplating. And I grabbed it. And I didn't realize till after I bought it. You know, I started putting two and two together. Because we were having a conversation about it. She said, I, okay, so she was ahead of me. And she had already gone down that aisle. And so I went down the aisle and I saw the quilt on the floor. And I said, oh, what a pretty quilt. And I picked it up. And I said, I wonder what size it is. Because I thought it looked kind of small. But when we opened it, I think it's a king. It's either a king or a queen. And I said, well, I'm getting this. And it was like $13.74. We didn't go on a day when there was any specials. Not on any of the colors we had in our basket. So, I didn't really think much about it, y'all. Because I thought if she wanted it, you know, she would have taken it. Or she would have said, hey, I want that. And, and I would have, in a minute, in a heartbeat, given it to her. But I just, I guess, you know, when you're in that reseller mode, all you see are dollar signs, you know. It is. What's this worth? And I knew it was worth, so I grabbed it. I felt kind of bad, but no, I, I still didn't snap it. It took me a while, like a day or two. So that night, the room, the office air conditioner unit is freaking out. When it, I put two and two together. When it rains real hard, somehow moisture is getting into that AC unit. And when you turn it on, it just goes beep, 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 a constant beep. Uh, those of you that watch these videos that are friends of Katie probably have heard it in the background. But it'll beep forever, or it'll beep for a long time, hours, and then finally stop. And it changes the temperature. Like, if you try to put it on 75, oh, it goes back to 61. It won't let you. It won't let you. So, for Katie's birthday... And, you know, I asked her what she wanted, and she told me another AC unit. So I ordered it, you know, it was over $200, and now this one's working again. See, what happened was, you know, we had that hurricane, so the unit got real wet, and it took it a couple of days to dry out. So we got back in town from Corpus today, and it's been hot here, uh, I guess no rain. And... I went in the bedroom and I told Kate, I told Pat, did the has did the AC unit make that beeping noise? And she said no, and it doesn't change the temperature. So I I think that's what it is. But we're gonna hold on to the new one just in case. So so um, so this is what happened. Um, yeah, Friday. We were getting it. I was getting in the car. Uh, I, I let my mom always, my, the way I see it, it's a thing of respect. So my mother rides in the front seat. I never put my mother in the back seat. So I was in the back seat. <laughs> and what happened was 
my wheelchair was too close to the, the door. And the thing about cars is your back door does not open as wide as the front well. So we had the back door open as far as it would open. I stand up and when I stand up the window, the door is like right here in my face and I know that's not a good sign because now I'm going to have to move very carefully as to not to knock myself out. So the way that I'm standing, I need to pivot. You know, I'm trying to pivot so I can put my butt down on the seat and slide in. Well, I pivoted wrong and I pulled a muscle or something in my only good leg and it hurt really bad. Well, we get back to the hotel, Pat gives me a couple of aspirin and it really did alleviate a lot of it. Um, and then yesterday, it, it wasn't bothering me. So we go to the gift shop. We're all ready to go home. We're getting ready to head home. And the same thing happens again. I'm wheeled too close to the door. And I can't back up because the person that wheeled me to the door is behind the wheelchair and I don't want to be like, hey, can you move? So I figured, you know, I can do it. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be a fussy bucket. I don't want to complain a bit and, you know, be like, hey, you've just done this really nice thing for me, but I'm going to get hurt. So I was like, I know how to do it. And so I stood up and I did the same thing. I started to pivot and this time I really don't know what happened. But I guess I pivoted too hard, and I actually screamed down in pain. I don't do that. I have a, I have a, I have a pretty high threshold to pain. You know, I've had a lot of it, but this really hurt, and it hurt all the way home. So when we got home, I had to call Elias and be like, "Hey, man, I might need your help getting out of the car." Well, he wasn't really a lot of help getting out of the car. It's like, just best, just put the wheelchair here and I'll get in it kind of thing. And then he loaded me down with all the heavy luggage. Thanks. Because my legs are already hurting. Let's, let's put a lot of weight on it. Again, I didn't say anything. I just wanted to get inside the house. So we get inside the house and I'm trying to help him because, you know, I don't have a ramp. So I was trying to use my leg to push me up over, I call it the hump, it's the entry of the door, and I just couldn't do it. And so he had to do it, and it, it, took, it, it, it took a lot out of him. And then, you know, I had a lot of stuff. I had Goodwill stuff. I had our stuff, you know, stuff you buy also while you're there, your souvenirs and things, and... He just left him in the dining room. Well, my leg is killing me. I can't use my leg to move anywhere. I have to keep my foot up in the air. So he just drops it all in the hallway and I'm like, there's no way I'm ever gonna get this into my room. And he was tired. He's been working till 7.30 a.m. and actually kind of not getting any sleep. So I was just thankful to get out of him what I did. And I let my rest, my leg rest a minute and then I just went out there and I drug it. I just drug the bag, it was big, it was heavy. It's one of those big good blow bags. So I just pulled it. But um, I think we got some interesting things from the bins. The way they do it in Corpus is they have bins just for clothing. And then they have bins for everything else, like books and the such. Shoes are in there. But you also find some clothes, minimal amounts of clothes. I think it's probably people that put clothes in their baskets and then change their mind. So there's this gentleman in there. This Hispanic older male. And he had a basket full of books. I mean, I'm going to call them the Tower of Books because... There were towers of books, and I guess my mom, you know, mom was talking to him, 
And she said, what are you going to do with all those books? And he says, well, you know, I sell them online. And she said, oh, you do pretty good? And he said, yeah, they're all in Spanish. I was like, hey, I never thought of that. That's a good little niche there. And uh, he told mom he does really well. But I guess, you know, in cities that are further south, closer to Mexico, probably going to have more Hispanic written books, you know, and more people down there are going to buy them. So I thought that was a great idea. I hope that he does well. I'm not going to steal his idea. It belongs to him. But that's a great niche. I thought that's a really great niche. So anyway, like I said, um, with my leg right now, I'm, I, I, to move is truly, y'all, excruciating. Um, last night, I had to go to the bathroom really bad. And, you know, with kidney issues, you don't urinate that often. But of course, when you hurt yourself and can't walk, you have to pee. So <laughs> I came into the bath. You know, I came into the bedroom to go to the bathroom, and I couldn't get out of the chair. I couldn't push myself up uh, because not only did did I pull a muscle, but that leg is still swollen, so it's heavy. You know, it's very heavy. And so I had to get Elias and Katie to get me on the toilet. I had one on one side, one on the other, because I was trying to get the pressure of the bad leg off, but the prosthetic leg, when I went to put it on, it won't connect, and, and it won't connect if my legs are swollen. So I couldn't get it on. I put it on, but it didn't connect because I have to have two legs. I don't hop. I'm not a bunny. So I put it on, and, you know, it doesn't really move with you. So I was telling Elias, put your foot behind my prosthetic foot and push it forward because my knee was buckling. Tons had to say, I'm about to fall. I'm about to fall. I had to say it three times before he did it. Thank God for Katie, y'all. She is so strong. She knows what to do. I tell her, hold on to me here. Hold tight. Or I'll say, go fast. Go fast. And she knows, oh, mom is hurting. I need to move her. So, <laughs> I go to the bathroom. My husband's in there. My daughter's in there. And then my sister comes to the door. And then the dog so I've got everybody in the bathroom with me. And I'm like, okay, now i got to get up. So how are we going to do that? So I tell them, okay, I'm going to lean forward. And when I lean forward, y'all stick your arms underneath my armpits. By the way, I'm sweating. My whole body was sweating. I had to go to the bathroom so bad that tension. I don't know if y'all have ever had that, but, you know. I'm wet and I'm trying to, you know, my husband's like grabbing towels. I'm like, oh, you're so over dramatic. But anyway, I lean forward and they do, Katie does a great job. She caught me up real fast. Elias was a little lacking behind. So I get up and if I stand without moving, the leg won't hurt. So my husband says to me something I already told myself and am already aware of because I've had pain in my life. He says, no, you already know it's going to hurt. You're just going to have to commit to the pain. Stand up. Get through the pain. It'll pass. And I looked at him, and I said, I know that, but I'm just not ready for the initial pain because it's pretty intense. Plus, I couldn't stand up. So, you know, you're, you're trying to stand up pain. Sit back down. Okay, I can do this. Try to get up, extreme pain, you sit back down. So finally, we get, okay, so my sister, okay. So my sister gets the wheelchair and she puts it right, you know, at the bathroom door. And I said, no, 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 I, I can't get back in that chair. I said, if I, if I get down, I'm not gonna be able to get back up, it hurts too bad. I said, I need them to walk me to the bed, just walk me to the bed and I'll be fine. So, let me show y'all. Okay, so there's my wheelchair. 
right there. Let me do this. So anyway, the bathroom is over here. So the bathroom is over there. I hope you can see it. So all I wanted to do is walk from the toilet over here to the bed. Pat and sis so that I don't fall to put me in the chair. And I was begging, y'all. I was begging, please don't put me back in the chair. Please don't put me back in the chair. Because I can't get up. They put me in the chair. And then they say to me, how are we going to get you on the bed? And I said, well, if we wouldn't use the chair, you could have walked me to the bed. Now what are we going to do? So I said, okay. Get me as close to the bed as you can. So I laid across the bed the best I could without putting any weight, well, minimal weight on the leg. It, it did hurt. So I told Katie, do it like you did last time. I said, y'all, grab me from right underneath my ass and push me. Just shove me, throttle me through the air. And they did. And that wasn't very painful, but it was the rolling over to be flat on my back. And then Katie had to get pillows to elevate my leg, and that really hurt. Any movement of this leg is extremely painful. And uh, my sister is a nurse. I need coffee. I, I apologize. So my sister's a nurse. And she says she thinks that, yes, I did twist something. But with my leg being as swollen as it is and not going down, that is painful all on its own. I told her, yeah, it usually doesn't affect me if, you know, like if I'm laying down or even getting up out of the chair, it'll be uncomfortable, but it's not something I can't do or that, you know, it's so excruciating that you scream out in pain. So... I probably had something to do with it, and I can't get the swelling. I've talked to y'all about it probably for the last month. It's just not going down. So Patricia's like, well, come on. We're going to take you to the emergency room. I said, no. Mm-mm. I'm not going. I have reasons that I'm going to share with you right now. of why I haven't gone to the foot doctor and why I'm afraid to go to the hospital. So, in 2010, right before Elias bought the house, I weirdly got gangrene in the big toe of my left foot. And I lost that toe. That was the first toe I lost. Well, usually it doesn't always happen right away, but a few years after you lose a, a, a toe or whatever, you'll start having problems beneath where it was because it's like a, a spreading thing, okay? Well... For the last few months, I have a hole on the bottom of my foot where the toe used to be, and it goes really deep. You know, I can see things down there. So, to treat it, I have this cream that's for infections so I put the cream on then I bandage it and I have to use paper tape so it's on the bottom of my foot sorry I know it's starting to give me a moment 
Okay, I have Kleenex over there, but I can't reach them. My leg won't let me stretch. And I have nothing to lower it here. Anyway, sorry. We're all human, so let's give each other a break. Anyway, so it's whole. And I put this cream on it. And I cover it, and I put, you know, a sterile pad. I cush it up real good. Because I noticed I put a lot of weight on that part of my foot. So I try to cushion it. And it comes and goes. It heals. And then it starts to deteriorate again. Well, I noticed that when I would put the paper tape across the top of my foot, it was breaking down my foot. My skin was breaking down. And so I was trying to find alternate ways to put this bandage on. And I just, I can't do it. Tape is going to have to be there. So now, looking at it. There's a red patch of skin on the top part of my foot. And it's not going away. So I'm afraid of whatever is going on on the bottom of the foot. It is working its way to the top of the foot. Which could easily be an infection. Which will lead to another amputation that's why I didn't want to go to the emergency room and it's why I don't want to go to a podiatrist because having one foot or one leg is hard enough if I didn't have both then I really wouldn't know what I would do. You know. I need something to wipe my nose. That was the most traumatic experience of my life. Done, y'all. Okay. But yeah, that was really traumatic. Uh, three months, three plus months of being away from your family, being alone. At my rehab place was north of here about 45 minutes Katie not driving the freeways and her dad working almost every day I don't, honestly they never came to Encompass the only time they went there was there was a hospital that's right next door to the rehab and uh, oh my nails are dirty that's from traveling and I bathed anyway so I was in therapy one day and it was it wasn't like leg therapy it was hand therapy you sit at like this table and I know y'all probably seen old people do it but you pick up pegs and you put them in different spots so the lady that was my therapist that day I'd never had her before um, but you know that kind of person where you, if she would be in the same building, I just didn't always interact with her. But I'd see her, you know, and you know, there's those people that it's not that you don't, you don't instantly dislike them, but there's something about them that you feel is not good. You know, like maybe they don't care, or whatever. It's like I tell my sister, there's two types of nurses, in my opinion. They're the ones that are nurses because they generally want to help people. I think they all start off in the beginning like that. But then you have the nurses that it's all about the money. So they're going to do their minimal job to make their maximum check. 
So anyway, I'm sitting there. I've been doing this for a long time. It's like, I'm thinking to myself, is this ever going to end? And I wasn't feeling good. Now, she's on her cell phone the whole time. She's not even looking at me to see what I'm doing. She would just bark out orders. Okay, go out to the left. Go out to the right. Do them diagonally. Do them, you know, whatever. And I would. I just was... It was a very uncomfortable situation. So, I was doing it and everything. And I looked at her. And I said, I think... I just had an accident on myself. She said, well, therapy's almost over. Let's finish it. Okay. And I'm sitting there with what I know is... I'm sitting and you know what? It wasn't urine. So she gives me back to my room. And I said, could you please call PCA to clean me up? To check on me to clean me up? And she said, okay. And one did come. So... I'm laying on my side, and they take off my diaper, and the nurse says, oh, and this is the last thing I heard. She said, oh, there's blood in her stool. Call the doctor. I pass it out. Next thing I knew, I was in the emergency room at the hospital next door. I apparently had ruptured a vein in my stomach. Uh, never heard of it, but okay. And I had passed out, and when I woke up, Katie and Elias were there, and I was surprised. I was like, why did it was such a long drive for them? How did they get there so fast? And then I was like, why are you here? You know, there's, there's nothing they can do. And the emergency room nurses made it sound like I was gonna freaking die. So my poor family is driving 45 minutes worrying if I'm going to be dead by the time they get there. Ah, uh, stressed me out. So I don't know how long they stayed because they they were taking me away to my own room and they we had to do surgery and all that. So I I don't know how long they were there really how long I visited with them. I I was I was so out of it. So these are reasons and these are just the beginnings because the therapy alone at Encompass lasts three months. No, I'm lying to you. Three weeks. You get three weeks of heavy duty therapy every day, bright and early, even before you get breakfast. And they put your body through shit. It's tough. But you rehabilitate. So the thing is, you have to be there three weeks consecutively. You miss time. You have to start all over again. Well, when they took me into the emergency room and I was gone for five days, I lost my weeks. And I was almost done. I was almost done. I had like a few days left. So I had to do it all over again. All over again. But my release date was October 31st, 2018. So I'll always remember that. So here's a quick story. It's kind of sad, but I'll tell you about it. Again, excuse me. I know that's rude, y'all. I apologize, but I need fluid. I'm a fluid kind of girl that never pees. So, I'm at, so I'm in therapy one day. And they have, you know, all kinds of uh, equipment. It's so there's groups. Everybody's doing their own thing. Well, I wanted extra. You could get extra therapy. It didn't take away from your three weeks. You still had to do your three weeks. But I was feeling stronger, and I wanted to take advantage of it. And there's a couple things I really did like. Uh, it's like this hoist thing. They put you, they put your full body up against, you know, like a rubber, it's rubber, but it's like the length of your whole body, and they fasten you in, and it's got a lift underneath your butt so that you don't slide down, and what it does is you have to power it with your arms to get to the top, depending on what your affliction is, of course, so 
I, I loved doing that. And I would get up at the top and I would just watch everybody uh, do their thing. So one day I'm up there and there was an Asian lady that did uh, like spiritual stuff. So I, I was behind her, not mocking her. I was really doing it, but she loved it. And I was doing what she was doing and enjoying it. It was very relaxing. And this girl from nowhere says, hey, would you be my friend? I need a friend. I don't have any friends. And, you know, I'm not into that after what I've been through. And I said, yeah, I'll be your friend. And we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be in here forever. Well, her name was Laura Scoggins. And she came from a small town outside of Lake Livingston, which is really north of uh, where we were. But with it being such a rural area, there is no uh, other place for her. Plus, she was already on dialysis. This is before I, I even knew I was going to be on it. But she was on dialysis pretty heavy, you know, every day. And she did not eat properly. She was a very large girl. I'm going to be nice, but she was a very large girl. She had to have been, because I used to weigh almost 300 pounds, so I know what it looks like. But she, she was over 300, easy, maybe 330, 340, big girl. So she would try, we, there was a guy that we, we all hung out together because we smoked. And I can't even remember the guy's name. But um, his mother would come visit, and she would bring him cigarettes or... You know, if he wanted food, a certain food, she would bring it. Well, this girl, Laura, would have this guy, Mike, that was his name. She would have Mike say, oh, Mike, please beg your mom, pick up pizza or pick up enchiladas or pick up, you know, really bad food she was not supposed to have. And another thing is we would eat lunch together in the dining room. And whatever I didn't finish, that girl was all over it. And I wasn't eating a lot. Like, I think one time they brought us a tuna sandwich cut in half I took two bites of it and she uh, she even ate what I didn't eat and uh, so right before I was leaving I was leaving before her she was getting ready to leave the week uh, after me she was really excited uh, her husband they didn't have a great relationship and he wouldn't bring um their daughter to come see her because he said the trip was too far and it really broke her heart I mean she she really wanted to be, see her daughter she loved her and she would like Skype her every day after school you know watch her come through the front door and make sure she was okay and uh, they would have a conversation and it was nice and she I lost my cigarettes and she was just telling me there they are how how much she was looking forward to going home and being with her daughter. So I was excited for her. Well, I leave, like I said, on Halloween, and they had given me some oxygen to take home. I didn't need it, but they made me take it. So we had to bring it back after like a week because, you know, they have to fill it up. I didn't, I didn't bring it back with me because I didn't need it. So we go up there to drop it off, and they brought her out you know, for us to talk, because she was my friend, and, you know, we said goodbye, and when you're getting out of here, and how is it, and, you know, it's like being in jail, talking about, you know, all that, and she said she's going to get out in a week, well, I was on Facebook, back when I did Facebook, she died, she didn't make it home, she didn't get to see her baby again. And I'm not, I'm not being a bitch. So, if y'all take it that way, I apologize. But this is coming from someone who's already living this life of illness, okay? When you're sick and you have one thing that means the most to you, then you do what you have to to try to get yourself better. Now, it doesn't always work, and yes, it's a hard struggle, but I feel like food, you can live without those certain foods. 
that's not what your body is needing anyway. You know, food is just to feed us, to keep us alive. It's nutrition. And there's just things that you can live without if it means saving your life. I'm diabetic. I don't eat sugar. Now, God bless my daughter. Love her to death, and y'all know that. But for my birthday, she bought me a carrot cake. There's a lot of sugar in that carrot cake. I had none. I didn't need any of it. And I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but it's like, baby, there's a million things that mom wants and could use. Because that carrot cake was like 60 bucks. No, we could have done something else with that. I appreciate the surprise. And I appreciate the thoughtfulness and the effort. I do. She's a great kid. But I don't feel like it was something that was, you know, thought all the way through. Like maybe it was easy. I don't know. Uh, but neither of my brothers wished me a happy birthday. And you can't forget my birthday. It's September 11th. How do you forget that? I... You don't. And Patricia's Jehovah, so she doesn't celebrate it. Mom tested me the night before. Hey, you're going to wake up, be 56, happy birthday, but nothing on my birthday. I think birthdays really are kind of overrated because, you know, you get disappointed. Regardless, very rarely can it just be a day of celebration. I don't need... A bunch of gifts and presents and all that. But what I like, what I truly like is a good barbecue or any type of really good meal with your family. Ellie's side of family, my side of the family. A card maybe here or there. Even a homemade gift would make me happy. And even without that, I would be happy. So, you know, it doesn't... Ha it's too big of a deal. People make it too big of a deal when you have to have, you know, these grand gestures and big presents. And that, to me, is not what it's about. Neither is Christmas. Christmas isn't even about us. So get off your high horses if you didn't get your Bose speaker. Although I do have some for sale. All right, y'all. I've been chattering choo-choo. Oh, did I tell you that the name of of the hotel we stayed in in Corpus is actually called Quality Inns and Suites on the Beach. But you got to make sure you get a room with a balcony. They are doing a major renovation. Major. Uh, when we looked at the picture of the hotel online, it was yellow. And when we got there, it was green. We were confused and weren't sure we were we were supposed to be. The owners are of Middle Eastern descent. They are the, the looks like a dad and a daughter. The dad was extremely friendly. The daughter not at all. Uh, but they did serve a warm breakfast. Like you know, you can't really get those, but they're starting to pick back up. It was simple. It was um, sausage, scrambled eggs. Um, you could make your own omelet, cheese omelet, uh, waffles variety of cereals, breads, muffins, beverages. So, uh, the only thing is they didn't have Splenda. They used Sweet and Low. So I think we all need to stand up, let them know, serve Splenda. Okay, guys. Well, I hope you liked the videos we made. Uh, you know, I wish that y'all could have been there. I think you really would have loved it. It was so nice in that balcony with the water right there. The only thing we did not accomplish is I still have my dad's ashes. 
we were going to go to the, the beach that we stayed at. The sand was really loose and I could not get through it. So we were going to wait yesterday for it to cool off a little bit and go down to South Padre Island Drive. The, the sand is a lot firmer because more people drive on it. You don't really drive on this beach. So Pat said, you know, let it cool off and, and then we'll go. But, you know, she got tired and she took a little nap. And then she woke up for a little bit and uh, ate, they ate different than me. I didn't eat what they ate. And I didn't eat at all that night. So I figured, you know, driving around, shopping, she was probably tired, she fell asleep. So we didn't make it to the beach. I brought my dad home, he's with me. I don't know if y'all can see that. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but it's a white container with a flower on top. Well, my dad's in there, he's in, not just laying there, you know, he's secure. Well, what happened, because I don't think I've told y'all this, I wasn't planning on doing all this, but while we're here, so, you know, I don't get along with my evil stepmother, and I'll tell you what the reason is, because from the very beginning, I knew she was white trash. My grandfather had passed away, and in the family limousine was my... I call her Oma. It's German for grandmother. So it was my Oma, my dad's girlfriend, him and Sharon were not married at the time. My dad, me, my sister. And my sister and I had both had our babies at about the same time. So we had infants in the limousine. And my grandma was telling me a story that I had heard many times. And I think I've told y'all this story. So, you know, I'm smiling and I'm, mm -hmm, oh, ma, yeah, you know, trying to remember all the characters. And Sharon looks at me, they call me Jenny. And she says, Jenny, don't you get tired of your grandma telling you the same stories over and over again? And, Ooh, who are you? You, you just a girlfriend, baby. You can come and you can go. You are not part of this family is what I'm thinking because it really ticked me off. And so I looked at her and I said, no. I said, she doesn't remember that she told me this story and it's taken, what, a minute and 30 seconds out of my life to hear it again and to help me remember it? No, I don't have a problem with that, not at all. And in my family, my father was very strict about respecting your elders. You did not, I know. Oh, he didn't talk back to his mother. You didn't say anything negative about her. He will knock your head off, okay? So that kind of made me lose a little respect for him at that moment too, to allow her to say that kind of thing. And you don't even know me either. You don't know me. So at that moment, I knew there would be no respect there. And then, what did she do after that? She made that comment, oh, she was talking about her life. And she's, I don't, I don't know how, why she said it or, or, or what the story, I, I wasn't listening. All I heard her say was, yeah, I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. And I thought to myself, yeah, you sure were. And now you got your nasty little sharp claws into my dad's money. Oh, I'm sorry. In his life. You got your claws in his life. So she proceeded to make sure that she was going to eliminate dad's children. Everybody that was important to dad, she was going to get rid of. So... They lived in West Virginia, and of course, we all lived down here. And one year, Katie was just baby. She was three months old. It was close to Christmas. So I called Sharon to ask her what would be a good gift for Dad for Christmas. I wanted to get him something special. Well, she says to me, he needs socks and underwear. And I said, oh, I said, um, 
no, Sharon, I said, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't, I don't want to buy Dad socks and underwear. You know, is there anything else that I can get him? And she went off on me and was yelling at me. And, well, why does it matter? You don't love your father anyway. And just going in on me. Well, you picked the wrong person. So I said to her, I said, Sharon, I said, obviously you're not aware of the relationship that I have with my father. And you definitely do not know the feelings that I have for him. And she's yelling at me, calling me a liar. So I said, well, as far as I'm concerned, this conversation is over. And I hung up. Well, dad was at work. And a couple hours later, I guess came home and he called me. Excuse me. And he asked me what happened on the phone with Sharon. Forbade him. I gave him the whole conversation. He says, well, she said that you cussed her out every which way up and down, and you slammed the phone down on her. You don't treat her like that. And that was it. He hung up on me, and we didn't talk for years until my daughter was 14. She was three months old at the time. Ridiculous. So one down, Sharon, three to go. Well, it was easy for her to do it with the boys because the boys, they loved dad, but they had a really, 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 really bad relationship with him mentally, mostly physically, very verbally. My dad was like that with all of us. Me, not so much because I knew when to keep my damn mouth shut by watching the other ones get beat up and, oh, note to self. Don't do that. It'll piss that off. <laughs> yeah, I'm not stupid. So, anyway, I forgot what I was saying. Something about the boys. Yeah, Dad was working on the boys for sure. I mean, I, I could tell y'all stories, but I won't because they're not my stories to tell. They affected me. They traumatized me, but they didn't happen to me. So I don't have the right to share them. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to clickbait you. It just is the way it is. You know, you love your family too, and you want to protect them. So anyway, Sharon and I didn't get along. It was obvious. And we went up there when Katie was 14, but all the family was around. So I didn't spend a lot of time talking to Sharon, you know, getting to know her or anything. It was, uh, it was my brother, his wife at the time, Nicklin, their two kids, and Austin is autistic, and he was little. So when he was little, it was really bad. And then it was me and Katie. And then my sister and her husband showed up. So I didn't spend a lot of time, you know, talking to Sharon, but she didn't make the effort either. And I, my goal is, we've come this far, I want to be around the family that I know loves me. I don't want to play with you. I don't care. But everything was mediocre. No harsh words were said, no loving words were said, but no harsh words were said. So then, in... It, it, it was early 2018, because I think this is part of the reason I lost my leg, too. But anyway, now that time Katie and I stayed a while. Was that 2014? Yeah, it had to been 2014 and Katie and I stayed a while. Because while I was at my dad's, I got uh, accepted for my Medicare. So, 2016. So, anyway... We were up there, and she was all like, Oh, everything's great. We get along so wonderfully. And she put her hand on my cheek and was just so sweet. And I'm like, this woman is playing my dad again. I, you know, but I went along with it because it was important to my father that we all get along. So that's why I did it. Maybe that's why she did it too. But not one time did I speak lie. Not one time did I say, you know, oh, I didn't mean it. 
or it came out the wrong way, or I've always loved you, whatever. She, we haven't even ever interacted with her family. She has kids, she has grandkids. I don't know any of them. I only know one of her daughter's names because they live together. And she did something kind that, you know, that thing that I showed you my dad was in, she bought that for us. Sharon wasn't gonna do shit. She was just gonna stick them in a plastic bag, send it down with Patricia, and Patricia could give it to me. Wow. And we wanted some of his t-shirts. Of course, Patricia couldn't say it was for me. Anyway, so Pat and I are on the phone. It's like the day before she leaves, she's over at Sharon's because it's like a halfway mark for her, and she had to pick up the stuff from Dad. So she calls me on the phone. We're just talking, you know, no big deal. And at first, I didn't understand what she was saying. But she said that 